So what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a series of templates and methods for you to create some of the most common reusable objects in web today. Um, so if you pop open your Get Bootstrap, a web browser, and go to Get Bootstrap, first off, don't download from here. I want you to download from GitHub because if you download from GitHub, you actually have the examples and things in your file and I will put a link for that in the module so don't bother to do this download but let's take a look at getting started so if you go hit the getting started page you're gonna see that you have all of these starter templates um, for instance this is gorgeous this is um, you can start your website with a full graphic image it's just showing black there but basically it's an image this is a carousel for your pictures to flip through and also the important thing to note that these are the examples as they're given to you but everything is very modular so for instance you may want to put the carousel in top of uh, like on this jumbotron is something that I recently did because I wanted this narrow layout but instead of just having a jumbotron which is static I wanted a uh, carousel which is not so I can just pluck things out and move things around as I want them because everything is in little blocks that can be moved around so you know I can say that I want this kind of nav bar and I want a sticky footer and I just go ahead and I grab things from one module or from one example and just paste them on my page basically um, so everything is very very slick even though you have all these tools you have to have a very good mastery of HTML and CSS to use them but it really speeds things up to get these really high-end results very quickly so go ahead and go to the GitHub link address that I gave you. Um, there's a link inside of your module. And then you're going to download this zip, or uh, I don't know, you can probably get it from uploading up here. There's probably a thing. GitHub is actually a really good place for people who uh, want to share their code and uh, other open source projects and things are stored. And you can go in and it's a trustworthy, well-respected site to get them. So once you download it, you're going to go into your download file. And you can't really see that I have it here, but you're going to go ahead and unzip, expand your file wherever you have it. And you can see here that in my downloads now, I have, that's my desktop, my downloads, I have my bootstrap file because I expanded it. Um, so you will have to go in and open with your archive utility or unzip or whatever it is that's built into Windows. But then you're going to get an unzipped folder. And that you're going to go ahead and move to your desktop or to wherever it is that you're going to be working. Um, so I am going to uh, rename it because I think I already have... Um, I'm just going to rename it 1316 demo and then I'm going to move that to my desktop because that's where I'm working. Now I can go ahead and Dreamweaver and I can make a new site And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to point it to that folder on my desktop. I call it 1316 demo. And you'll see there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff in there. And that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and save that. we're gonna look at the anatomy of a of a site
Okay, so now this is everything that is inside of my bootstrap site. And where the good stuff actually is, though you need a lot of this, and we'll kind of tear that apart, but the good stuff is actually down here in Docs. And then go into your Examples folder. <laughs> right here, Examples. You can see if I spread this out. And then all of these different web pages are in here. Now the one that I want you to start dealing with first is the, uh, let me see which one it is, Jumbotron Narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that open. And you can see that I have a Jumbotron Narrow CSS that just has CSS information that is specific just to this page. But then I also have my index page. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that open. And here is my HTML that goes into that. And if I split this with design, or I went into design mode and I can make this live here. I don't have enough screen real estate to really see the heck out of it here. But you can see that now I can actually go in and I can start modifying things. But I want to go in and take a look at how things are set up. So, for instance, I have these, um, I have this pill navigation here, I have a nav bar, I have the jumbotron, and then I have just different articles down here at the bottom, and then I have a footer. So let's look at how that is set up. If I take a look at the source code, things that are important to notice on your last assignment, I did insist, starting at that one, that you do have that doc type and that you have this character set. Those are very important. Those need to stay in there. Um, as we move our way down, you can start filling out these meta names, which are important. Um, your content. Google no longer relies on meta names and for search, but other search bars do, and so it's important to actually put that in there. Um, so you can go ahead and put for your description, like a uh, I don't know, Victorian clothing, costumes in San Antonio, Texas. Whatever it is, it's very descriptive that you are looking for. Um, these things here, these are linked to... Uh, actually, I'm not sure that that's actually linked to anything that's important. I may have to take a look at that one. Okay, but you can see here that I am linked to Bootstrap Min CSS. And that, I want to look at the CSS that come with this here. You can mess with that CSS, but you don't necessarily have to. And you can see by dot, 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 that means that I'm up two folders. And then over in the dist folder here, and CSS. What min means whenever you see that, that means that it is without any white space. All the white space has been taken out. So um, I can go ahead and I can take a look at this bootstrap min CSS, which is what I'm talking about here. And it's really not human readable code. But you have to realize that that one is the exact same as just um, plain bootstrap CSS which is human readable. You need to link to one or the other of these documents. But basically what I like to do is just leave it there linking to the min to the minimize because you can see well it only saves you 22 kilobytes but it saves you a little bit. So I do leave it to the minimized and then any other modifications that I do I actually create another CSS especially since I'm going to be using, for instance, if I'm going to change my carousel out for the Jumbotron or whatever it was, like, what I'm going to do, I would just take the carousel-specific cascading style sheet and put it on another, what I call usually compiled style sheet. Um, so let's take a look going further down in here. You can see it's calling for the Jumbotron narrow CSS and 
Dreamweaver so nicely put set up here and I can see that all of this is dealing specifically with these Jumbotron kinds of things specifically for that page actually I guess some of it's not Jumbotron but that's alright okay you can see here that I have my pills that's that pill navigation and that's just a simple list. It knows that when you call it the class nav, nav, pull, pull right, pills, it knows that that is what it's going to create. You don't have to tell it anything in particular about what you want. Okay, I can go down here and I can see that I have a Jumbotron. So I can take my Jumbotron. If I wanted to replace this with a uh, carousel instead of a Jumbotron, I would just go ahead and I would remove this whole jumbotron div I think my jumbotron ends right there that's the end of my jumbotron so I could go ahead and just delete that out but I don't want to first I want you to see what it is so I'm gonna look here um, Review in Safari. Let's do that. Okay, you can see that the Jumbotron just is a picture, or they sometimes call it a hero area, whatever. Um, and you can put titles and you can have a button on there. I don't want that. I want to exchange this for a carousel, but carousels are generally very wide. I don't want a very wide carousel. I just want it to fit in that area so I wanted to keep this narrow layout um, so I'm gonna go ahead now back to my Dreamweaver I'm gonna delete that Jumbotron I'm going to open up my carousel page pop that open I can go right down here. La 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 la. Oh look, it has it all marked off. Here's my carousel. I'm just gonna go ahead down here till it tells me I'm done with my carousel. Oh, there's the end of my carousel. I'm gonna copy that, control C. I'm gonna close that page since I have two called index. I don't want to confuse myself. And I'm going to go back here. where my Jumbotron was. Oops, am I on the right page? I believe my Jumbotron was right here. I'm just going to paste that in. So now I have a carousel, but the other thing that's important is I have to go in and I have to copy my carousel CSS information and I don't want to have my navbar wrapper or anything like that I just want the stuff that deals with the carousel so I'm gonna go ahead and just take that control copy my carousel information now I can go into My jumbo narrow CSS and I can actually replace my jumbotron information with my CSS information I don't need that jumbotron I just put that in there save my changes yes and there we go Oops, I probably have to update my code here a little bit.
but instead of having that, now I put in a carousel. Okay, one thing that I did forget to mention, because I wasn't thinking about it, is the fact that the Jumbotron, since it doesn't move, doesn't necessarily have dependencies upon external JavaScript libraries. However, the carousel does, and most of the pages that you're going to do, that if they have any kind of interactivity inside of Bootstrap, do require um, links to external libraries. So I pasted these three lines of code here, which I actually just copied and pasted from, well actually here, look, they're at the bottom right now of the, of the carousel page. I just went down to the bottom because you always want your JavaScript at the bottom, copied them, and then I pasted them to the bottom of the Jumbotron page down here. Um, so this is linking to uh, an external CDN for jQuery. It's re uh, linking to a bootstrap JavaScript file and uh, docs. I'm not exactly sure which one that is, but it requires it. It has those dependencies, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there. So now if I go ahead and I open this up in Firefox, it works. The reason why these little carrots are there not showing up inside of Firefox is that it uh, doesn't allow it when it's running off your local system but once you upload it somewhere else it will work just fine and dandy. Now all I would need to do in here is to put some pictures in the background instead of that gray. Okay, I've closed down all of my windows because I want to show you something kind of important. You may have been intimidated by all of the stuff that came down in the Bootstrap folder. It really does have a lot of stuff, but the thing that you really have to think about is that all of it is not necessary. And uh, you need to know what's important and what isn't. So mainly what you're going to need is just your cascading style sheets, your JavaScript, and your HTML files. But you need to know what cascading style sheets um, are necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen up my page here. I've kind of wandered away through it, from it. And I was messing with the Jumbotron Narrow. I probably actually should have copied this page and started over, but I was using that as my base page because I think it's always handy to start as a base. Okay, so I have this, and when I open that up fresh, you can see it opens up these two cascading style sheets as well as um, these three script sheets. So I know exactly what it is that I need to link to. Now, keep in mind that you may also have things like web fonts, um, but web fonts are going to be listed, obviously, on the web, so they will be be not relative paths. You have to worry about the things that are relative paths, which means they're something that is within your folder. Um, for instance, I could go up here and I have this fave icon. Now I happen to know that that actually is not necessary for this project. So I'm going to just delete that one. I believe that is just a great big purple B for, uh, for bootstrap, so I'm going to delete that. But I need to know that my cascading style sheets are here. So if I'm going to change my folder structure, I'm going to have to correct these links to properly represent where my CSS is located. And this one also. You can tell that this one is located currently inside of the same folder. And this is up two folders and over um, inside. I believe dist is distribution. So they're saying that that folder should be distributed. But even within that folder, remember there's a bootstrap.min.css and bootstrap.css and they're the exact same thing. And there are additional CSS sheets in there that are not required for the pages that I'm using or for this particular page. So you have to really be aware of what it is that you're linking to and what's important for your page. Same with the JavaScripts down here. You can see that I'm over here in the Assets and Distribution folder. I have bootstrap min.js. And what I would actually do for that one is I would locate um, 
probably a CDN for that also. I believe there's a bootstrap CDN that I can link to. Um, but this one, Doxmin, I may want to take a look at it and see what happens if it's really necessary. For right now, I'm just going to assume that it is and leave it at that. Okay, now let's take a look at um, the characteristics of our page, what we have going on here. I want to actually rename this Jumbotron Narrow CSS. I don't like that name, especially since I took out the Jumbotron. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that as uh, compiled because I'm going to compile all of my different things. Compiled may not be the best name, but it just makes sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and save that in there. And then what I'm going to have to do in here, since I'm no longer linking to that, um, to that CSS that was called Jumbotron, I have to fix my code for this page to link to the correct page because that's where I'm going to put everything. So now instead of this Jumbotron Narrow, I'm going to call it Compiled. I no longer need that Jumbotron CSS page. You can see I have Compiled here and Jumbotron. I could have actually just renamed that and then updated my links. It would have done the exact same thing. But I did it this way. It's complaining because I hadn't saved this yet. Now if I go ahead and take a look at this live, it should still work just fine. But now looking at this, we can take a look at... I'm going to slide this over so I have a little bit more space devoted to the design window. Dreamweaver gives us ways to select things and then uh, have them know uh, what CSS is applied to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this. This is my container and I can see here I have div class container and if I go over here to my CSS designer I can see what things are associated with it. So for instance I can see that my max width is 730 pixels. I can look at this and see that my max height of my carousel is 500 pixels. So that I know that any images that I make for this should have a max width of about 730 and actually probably a little less than that and have a max height of 750 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out and make some images to replace here.